Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. You've all been telling me how much you love my compilations as well as backstage drama and I'm here to give you more of what you want. So here are scandalous secrets from backstage on RuPaul's Drag Race. Let me know in the comments which of these secrets surprised you the most and if there are any other Drag Race secrets that you want me to investigate. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy. So, first up we have the last minute pageant. As you all know, Shangela Laquifa Widely competed on season two, season three, All Star three, and placed 12, sixth, and third, respectively. It's been confirmed by multiple sources that during the filming of season three, there was actually a three week break in filming for unconfirmed reasons. In an interview that Shangela gave, she said that the queens during the break were allowed to research each other because they were at home with the internet. And they were also allowed to take one bag of clothes from the workroom back home that they could work on and bring back into the competition. Before the show, Shangela had actually won the California Entertainer of the Year pageant and the runner-up, interestingly, was Chad Michaels. But this meant that Shangela qualified for the National Entertainer of the Year pageant, but it clashed with the filming of season three. But because the three week break happened unexpectedly, Shangela was actually able to compete in the pageant last minute. She competed in the pageant even though she hadn't had time to prepare for it or do anything on her, on her number. And she ended up winning first runner up, which is second place, which is pretty impressive. And fellow Drag Race alum Alyssa Edwards even performed in Shangela's number, which was before Alyssa was even on Drag Race. Alyssa had actually also been a judge at the California pageant the year before that Shangela had actually won. And then after the pageant, Shangela just returned to season three and continued filming. Kennedy's beef with Trixie. So Kennedy Havenport, as we know, competed on season seven and All Stars three, placing fourth and second respectively. Trixie Mattel also competed on season seven and All Stars three, placing sixth and then winner. But it appears that there's some tension between them, as Kennedy talked about in an interview. She, Kennedy said that she thought that Trixie was mean about her while filming All Stars 3 and didn't say mean things to her face. For example, when Trixie said her in her confessional that Kennedy's entrance look was white noise of ugly. Kennedy said that she felt Trixie was being a fake, ah, uh, B. <laughs> because she didn't say anything to her face. Kennedy's feelings were really hurt after the show because she thought that Trixie had sacrificed her integrity to create drama for the show. However, it appears as though the two have made up and Kennedy has still said online, yes, I still love Trixie, that will never change. The Stolen Crown. Sharon Needles competed on season four and won. But what you may not know is after she won, it was reported that her crown had been stolen. It was also alleged that season seven winner Violet Chachki was the one who stole the crown. It was even joked about by Trix Mattel in the C season seven reading challenge, although you may have missed this. Sharon confirmed in an interview that this was indeed true and that some punks from Atlanta had contacted her and said that they had her crown. They apparently said as long as Sharon didn't ask any questions, they would give her back the crown. Sharon said that she did what they asked and she did get the crown back, but it was broken. Sharon said that Violet was definitely involved in it all because Violet was photographed nude wearing the crown. The lip sync switch up. Jinx Monsoon competed on season five and won. She was often criticized for her makeup skills on the show, but she became a fan favorite very quickly. Fellow season five alum Detox has previously said that she felt Jinx was favored by production. And this came into play in episode 11 when Jinx and Detox both landed in the bottom for the sugar ball. 
The lip sync song was originally Free Your Mind, but was changed to Malambo Number no. 1 at the last minute. Detox has suggested that the song was actually changed by producers because they knew it fitted Jinx's style better. Jinx has said that she had indeed been singing that song a lot and she loved it and the producers knew that she loved it, but Jinx didn't know if that's why the song was changed. But Jinx has since said that she would have won the lip sync regardless because she was so determined to win, so it didn't really matter what the actual song was. Dita versus Courtney. Dita Ritz competed on season four and placed sixth. Courtney Act appeared on season six and placed runner-up. While on the show, Courtney said that fellow contestant Jocelyn Fox was the, quote, Dita Ritz of season six. Now, given that Courtney also described Jocelyn as being a low-rent version of herself, Dita must have not taken kindly to being compared to Jocelyn. Dita then made several scathing comments about Courtney online, uh, including calling her trash. And she also called her trash in a comment on one of Willem Belli's Instagram posts about Courtney. Courtney then defended herself and basically said that Dita was being a little bee. And Willem also got involved and basically told the girls that they shouldn't be fighting online because they're a sisterhood. At this point, it's not clear if they ever reconciled or what's happening between these two queens. The Vanishing Mirror Message Mariah Paris Balenciaga competed on Season 3 and All Stars 5, placing 9th and 8th respectively. On season 3, Mariah was eliminated in episode 6 after her poor performance in the Snatch Game. As is customary, Mariah wrote a mirror message. However, some fans have said that her mirror message was altered or removed by production after the fact. This is the mirror message from Mariah's exit interview. And this is from the next day when the Queens re-entered the workroom. As you can see, part of the message is actually missing above the word mug. It's been suggested that the erased part of the message said something along the lines of Congratulations, Raja. This would imply that Mariah felt that the production had already pre-chosen Raja as being the winner of the season. But so far, no one has ever given a definitive answer about this. The Forgotten Queen Kennedy Davenport was part of the top four in All Stars 3. As part of the finale, the top four had to perform RuPaul's song Kitty Girl. The opening shot showed Kennedy inside a moving truck with four dancers. In her YouTube special, Shangela is Shook, fellow season All Stars 3 contestant Shangela revealed some behind the scenes tea about the music video. Apparently, just before they started the first take, RuPaul needed to go get something and walked off set, so production waited for him to return. Shangela said about 10 minutes went by and then she heard someone banging on the door within the moving truck. Production had actually forgotten that Kennedy and the dancers were already in the truck and had been locked in there the whole time while they were waiting for RuPaul to come back. Shandra said that by the time they got her out, Kennedy was all hot and sweaty, her wig was falling off and they had to dry her off before they could resume filming. Davina DeCampo versus The Vivian so from the start of season one of Drag Race UK, it was clear that Davina DeCampo and the Vivian were going to be strong competitors. And throughout the season, Davina did very well in all of the challenges, but ultimately the Vivian won the crown. However, the two of them did have some drama on the show, especially in episode five, where the Vivian said that Davina always wore, quote, a red wig and a silver dress. And Davina didn't really take that very well and felt as though the Vivian was effectively discrediting her. And this led to an epic fight between the two of them where Davina famously said, a red wig and a silver dress, I don't think. 
However, what you may not know is that the drama continued after the show had ended. In an interview with QX magazine, Davina was quite critical of not only the Vivian, but also RuPaul and the show as well. Davina said, quote, I don't think I fit the model that RuPaul likes. He likes people who are cutthroat and will smash your kneecaps in in order to win. That's not me. And this comment is sort of implied as though Davina thinks that the Vivian is cutthroat and this kind of discredited the Vivian's win or at least that's how it was perceived by the Vivian. And the Vivian then clapped back on Twitter posting quote, smash your kneecaps in in order to win. I won that show fair and square, constantly discrediting my win. Grow up. And the drama doesn't stop there. Davina also mentioned this in another interview and she talked about the only person that she knew in the cast was the Vivian, but she said that the Vivian totally ignored her for the first three days and was kind of dismissive to her throughout the whole taping of the show. Davina continued in the interview and said that she truly thought of the Vivian as a friend because they had worked together before the show and she was the only person on the cast that she really knew. And then Davina said that it felt really crappy, effectively, that the Vivian clearly didn't feel the same way. And later the Vivian sent out another tweet in which she implied as though she had severed all ties with Davina. The Vivian said, quote, Weight lifted. I've never entertained fake friendships in my life. Not going to start now. Sorry it was public, but had to get it off my chest. Everyone versus Ellie. Ellie Diamond appeared on season two of Drag Race UK. The Scottish Queen was known for her impressive looks and sewing skills, and she also had her fair share of drama. In episode eight, Ellie won the mini challenge and was then given the power to decide the running order for that week's main challenge, which was a stand-up comedy show. And the other contestants, mainly fellow Scottish Queen Lawrence Cheney, felt that Ellie had tried to rig or destroy people using the running order to try and sabotage everyone. And then later in Untucked, fellow contestant Ahura exploded at Ellie and said that she quote, couldn't even look at her, meaning Ellie, because she was so angry. And this left many viewers a bit confused because this outburst from Ahura seemed like quite a big reaction that came seemingly out of nowhere. However, Ahura later said in an interview that what we didn't see is that on the main stage that week, they were actually asked who they thought should go home that week and Ellie chose Ahura. Ahura said that she was so angry and that's why she exploded in Untucked because she and Ellie had actually become best friends on the show which wasn't kind of shown but they had built up this real bond and so Ahura said she felt though as though Ellie quote threw her under the bus by putting her first in the comedy show and then also saying that Ahura should go home that week. But since then, the two of them have reconciled and Ahura said that the two of them are really good friends and they talk all the time. The Astina Incident Astina Mandela competed on season two of Drag Race UK. The trained dancer was actually a favourite to win, but she actually ended up going home in the second week. But just before she was eliminated, there was an incident that happened where Astina stormed off set, but the footage was not actually used in the end show. In an interview, Astina said that the producers kept moving her around while she was trying to get ready for the main stage, and so she eventually confronted them about it, and then they had a heated argument. Apparently one of the producers had to come over and get Astina and she eventually did return to the set at, and lip synced but then she was eliminated. And this story actually makes sense because before season two even aired there was a news article that came out saying that there was some drama about a contestant walking off set but it didn't say who it was and BBC never actually officially confirmed it but this interview with Astina would make it seem as though it was her that this article was referring to before the show even aired. And Astina has since admitted that she was battling mental health issues at the time and she wasn't really enjoying the experience on the show as a result, but she's now in a much better place. Tace versus Vinegar Strokes. 
Vinegar Strokes competed on season 1 of Drag Race UK. Vinegar was actually expected to do really well on the show and had recently, before the show aired, had recently performed in a West End musical alongside Judge Michelle Visage, but she was actually eliminated in the third week. But Vinegar actually landed in some hot water later when she made some mean comments online about season two contestant Tace. During the airing of season two, Vinegar Strokes was part of a live stream video for GAY and Vinegar said that some of Tace's looks were quote, the same old bleep and implied as though Tace's looks were really bad. Vinegar also went on to say quote, I blame the edit for making Tace look better than she actually is. Is. And then she then said that Tace needed to bring the quote drag race version of herself and not the brunch version of herself. And Vinegar also went on to say quote why is this person referring to Tace who let Ahura suck her off and make her outfits for her why is Ahura not in the building and this person is I don't get it. And by this, she was basically saying, why is Tay still in the competition when Ahura clearly made the outfits for her? But this is an unsubstantiated claim. Taste then hit back on Twitter and posted, quote, forgot how bitter Vinegar actually was until today. I wouldn't be so pressed if weren't meant to be friends. However, friends is an overstatement now. Hashtag buy hodgepodge. Vinegar eventually issued an apology to Tace and it seems as though the two of them have now patched things up. Veronica Green versus Ahura. Veronica Green competed on season two of Drag Race UK, but had to drop out of the competition because she contracted COVID-19 and she was then later announced that she would be part of season three. However, just before season three started, there was some drama involving season two contestant Ahura and Veronica Green. During a live Q&A session, Ahura was asked to play Shag, Mary Kill with her fellow season two contestants and Ahura said, quote, I would kill Veronica Mean because why? Because she's bleep. She's annoying. She's a little bleep backstage and she also gets kicked out fairly early on season three. And this comment caused a lot of backlash and a lot of people started attacking Ahura online and Ahura said that she later issued an apology to Veronica Green. Veronica Green was then later asked about this incident in an interview and Veronica said that Ahura had sent her an apology text message but Veronica had ignored the text message because she wasn't ready to speak to Ahura yet and she, uh, Veronica explained that the reason that she was annoyed was not actually what Ahura said because Ahura is entitled to her own opinion but what actually annoyed her was that Ahura had basically given a spoiler for season three by telling everyone that Veronica went home early because season three hadn't started airing yet when Ahura made those comments. Veronica then later added in the interview that she would eventually speak to Ahura, however it's not been confirmed whether this has actually happened yet, and Veronica also added that she has since left the season two WhatsApp group chat. Is Drag Race scripted? One of the things that many fans have wondered for years is whether Drag Race is scripted and if the contestants or the judges are told what to say. And the answer is perhaps a bit more complicated than you might think. For example, it has been alleged in the past that the judges do get scripted lines fed to them through an earpiece during the runways and this has since been confirmed. For example, Jeffrey Boyer Chapman, who was a judge on Canada's Drag Race Season 1, said that some of the comments he made to the contestants were fed to him through an earpiece and he was told to say them. And Season 1 contestant Tammy Brown has previously said that during her tense disagreement with RuPaul at the reunion episode, RuPaul's comebacks were fed to him through an earpiece. So it appears as though the judges might be scripted to a degree, but I think that's probably to be expected. And I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of the funny comments that they make during the runways are given to them. But what's more interesting, I think, is whether the contestants themselves are scripted. I think it's clear that certain topics that come up during the episodes are prompted by the producers because they don't seem like normal topics that you would just casually bring up in conversation. 
Drag Race often discusses difficult issues, especially things that concern the LGBT plus community, such as coming out, discrimination and intolerance. And I think most of us can understand and appreciate that the contestants are told to talk about these topics because it's important to bring more attention to these subjects and Drag Race is a great platform to reach a wide audience. But just as to how forced and genuine these conversations are is probably down to interpretation. For example, season 6 contestant Kelly Mantle once joked in an interview that during episode 1 she was stressed trying to get her makeup done and the producers forced her to have a conversation with Vivacious about her childhood but Kelly didn't have enough time or headspace to actually take the conversation seriously. Kelly, the producer's like, ask Vivacious what her childhood was like growing up in Jamaica. And I'm all like, I don't have time. I'm trying to put my makeup on. Right. I'm like, Vivacious, what was your childhood like? She's like, oh, mama, it was terrible. They tried to drown me in the ocean. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, that's so awful. You know? And similarly, when I interviewed Dave Lara, who was Jinx Monsoon's military veteran during the makeover challenge in season five, I asked Dave if Drag Race is scripted and he said that certain topics are fed to you by producers but the rest of it is all natural. So it appears as though certain elements of the show are scripted, which is to be expected, but what the contestants actually say is up to them. I'd just like to take a moment to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Adam and Eve. And if you want to spice up your love life either for you and your partner or just for yourself, Adam and Eve have just the right products for you. And what's better is that you can use the code DRAGT and you'll get 50% off one item plus free shipping in the US and Canada. Another reason I really like this company is because they have been pioneers in the industry. The company actually started back in 1971 and the idea was to sell condoms by mail because at the time you had to go to the doctor or health clinic to get them. And the company was involved in a lengthy legal battle with prosecutors over privacy and freedom of speech. Eventually the case went to the Supreme Court and the government backed down. So it's companies like Adam and Eve who helped make change in society. Adam and Eve is also great because they have 24-7 customer service, a 90-day no-hassle returns policy, they offer discreet shipping and 20% of their profit goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So make sure you check out Adam and Eve and use the code DRAGT to get 50% off one item and free shipping in the US and Canada. Thanks again to Adam and Eve for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to some more juicy drag race gossip. Shady editing. When it comes to reality TV, I think most people know that the shows are highly edited and as Tatiana would say, what you see isn't always the truth. However, what people may not know is the extent to which Drag Race is edited and how that can change your perception of not only the show, but the contestants themselves. Drag Race is usually filmed over four to eight weeks and then split into roughly 12 episodes. That means that each episode takes around two to three days to film, even though on the show they make out like each episode happens on a separate week. But in reality, each episode only takes a few days to film and this is split up between filming the confessionals, the mini challenges, the maxi challenges, runways and untucked, as well as any additional shots that they might need. And this means that the editors have days worth of footage that they need to condense down into one episode, which is around 40 to 60 minutes long, and this is where editing comes into play. And although editing is essential to make the show succinct and enjoyable, it also means that a lot of context gets left out, either by necessity, but also out of choice to try and push a certain narrative. For example, one of the things that has become a well-known phrase on Drag Race is the so-called villain edit. This is when a particular contestant is edited to look like a villain by only showing the bad things that they say and none of the good things. Famous examples of the so-called Drag Race villains include Fifi O'Hara, The Vixen and Roxy Andrews. And it's always difficult to say whether these contestants really deserved their villain status or whether they were edited to look that way. So let's look at a few examples. Jeremy Carey, formerly known as Fifi O'Hara, competed on season 4 and also All Stars 2. On season 4, Jeremy was shown to have lots of drama with several contestants such as Willem and Sharon Needles. And this reputation of being a villain was even brought up by other contestants such as Chad Michaels at the season 4 reunion who criticised Jeremy's behaviour on the show. 
Jeremy seemed to be aware of this villain status, and he even mentioned this during his entrance for All Stars 2. I'm Fifi O'Hara, and I'm playing a villain. Get it? However, according to Jeremy, there was a lot of shady editing that made him look much worse than he actually was. For example, if we take a look at this clip from season 4, during the episode 6 lip sync between Milan and Jiggly Caliente, when Milan takes her wig off, it cuts to a shot of Jeremy saying, quote, that's clearly a dude. Milan, girl, that's clearly a dude. However, if we spin on to episode 10, which was the makeover challenge called Dilfs, Dads I'd Like to Frock, during the main stage practice with Jeremy's makeover partner, Jeremy comments on his partner and says, quote, that's clearly a dude. No, that's clearly a dude. This is the exact same snippet that was used during the Milan vs Jiggly lip sync, which makes you question when Jeremy actually said this line and who he was referring to, and whether it was taken out of context to make Jeremy look more shady than he was. In the earlier seasons, this type of editing was easier to see, but Drag Race has definitely become smarter about this, and they now make the contestants wear the exact same thing when they film their confessionals, so you can't tell when the footage is taken from. In the earlier seasons, they didn't make the contestants wear the same clothes for the confessionals, which made it obvious when they had done the so-called Frankenstein editing. This is evidenced by this clip of Shangela from season 3, where she is clearly wearing different clothes in her confessionals, and they have tried to mash together two different parts of a sentence. And going back to Jeremy, apparently during All Stars 2, in the infamous moment on episode 5 where the eliminated queens appeared in the mirror in the workroom, the edit made it look like Jeremy had been bad-mouthing Alyssa Edwards the whole time, and that Alyssa was annoyed at Jeremy when she came back into the room. However, according to Jeremy, when Alyssa came back into the room, the other remaining contestants actually defended Jeremy to Alyssa and agreed with what Jeremy had been saying. However, this footage appears to have been cut out, which makes it look like Jeremy was the only one being critical of Alyssa, even though this apparently isn't true. And this further pushed the narrative that Jeremy and Alyssa hated each other. This narrative perfectly set up the rest of the episode, because Alyssa won that week's episode and had the power to send home Jeremy, which she did, but that all seems a little bit too convenient. Another example of villain editing is The Vixen. The Vixen appeared on season 10 and had drama with several contestants such as Aquaria and Eureka. And the general narrative surrounding The Vixen was that she was combative and confrontational and this was highlighted by her entrance line. However, according to the Vixen, the producers asked her to film her entrance several times, and the line that she said, which was, I'm just here to fight, was a quote from the TV show Bad Girls Club, and was an inside joke between the Vixen and her friends. The Vixen said that the way that she said her entrance line came off more combative than she intended because she was so nervous due to the fact that she had to refilm her entrance several times. And the Vixen also said that the producers might have done this on purpose to push the narrative from the start that the Vixen is a combative queen. The other ways that the editors can make a moment feel shadier than it is is by the use of the shade sound effects. There's a great video on the Top RPDR Videos channel, which I'll link to in the description, that documents how many times the shade noise is used for Latrice during All Stars 4. We were hilarious. I started off slow. Well, well. And you can see how it makes the moment seem more shady than it actually was. So, there were just a few ways that Drag Race may appear fake because of the inconsistent and sometimes shady editing choices, but I think this is pretty normal for most reality TV shows. Manipulating storylines One of the things that have made Drag Race so successful over the years is that you really get to know the contestants and you feel like you are with them on this crazy journey throughout the competition. And this is of course no accident and is carefully planned by the producers to make the show more enjoyable for the audience. And this is further evidenced by the fact that the people that work with the queens for their confessionals are called story producers. And the storytelling can really make a difference when it comes to how a contestant is perceived in the competition, but also where that contestant ranks in the competition. Let's take a look at a few examples. 
Season 4 was a pretty dramatic season, and the feud between Sharon Needles and Jeremy Carey, or Fifi O'Hara as he was known back then, was the first big rivalry on the show. And their epic fight in episode 4 where Jeremy said, go back to Party City, has gone down in Drag Race history. So it seemed a little coincidental that a few episodes later in episode 7, which was called Frenemies, the queens were partnered up with their biggest enemy in the competition and Sharon was partnered with Jeremy. Sharon and Jeremy landed in the bottom that week and had to lip sync for their lives, which many people felt was orchestrated by the producers because they wanted an ultimate showdown between the two biggest enemies on the season. However, Willem was actually called forward and disqualified from the competition because she had apparently broken the rules, which meant that neither Sharon nor Jeremy were actually eliminated that episode. I think it's pretty obvious that production would have known about Willem's rule breaking before the lip sync, but they decided to eliminate Willem after the lip sync to increase drama and intensify the storyline between Sharon and Jeremy. In an interview, Jeremy implied as though he and Sharon had spoken and agreed to lean into their feud because they knew that it would make good TV and it would make it more likely for them both to get to the finale. And as a different example, in season 13, Candy Muse was portrayed as quite an outspoken queen throughout the season and had drama with other contestants including Tamisha Iman. The tension came to a head in Untucked of episode 5 where Candy and Tamisha had a big argument. And then, in the very next episode, both Candy and Tamisha coincidentally landed in the bottom and had to lip sync against each other, with Candy ultimately winning and sending Tamisha home. It has been suggested by many people online that Tamisha should not have been in the bottom that episode, but it made for better TV entertainment for the lip sync to be between Candy and Tamisha because they had had a beef with each other the episode before. Also, later in the season, Candy was saved from elimination when she landed in the bottom against Simone, who was a favourite to win, so it seemed likely that Candy would be going home. Candy was told to sashay away, but then RuPaul stopped her and said that it was a double chante, and Candy was saved and then eventually made it to the top four. And I don't want to invalidate Candy or say that she didn't deserve her spot in the top four, because she's a very talented queen and she definitely deserved her place in the competition but I think most people would agree that Candy was one of the most entertaining members of season 13, and if she left, there wouldn't have been as much drama. So it's probably fair to say that the producers wanted to keep her in the competition for as long as possible, and this may explain the outcome of certain episodes. And production has even been accused of pushing certain queens to be the winners too. For example, I've spoken about this in a previous video, but in season 5, Jinx Monsoon became an early fan favourite and eventually went on to win the season. However, fellow season 5 competitor Detox has previously said that she was approached by a producer and asked if she could help Jinx with her makeup and Detox said no. And then when Jinx and Detox fell in the bottom together in episode 11, Detox said that the lip sync song was changed at the last minute and swapped to Malambo number 1, which Jinx had apparently been singing a lot backstage and the producers knew that this was Jinx's preferred song because it fit into her campy style. And Detox said that she thinks the producers deliberately swapped the song to give Jinx an advantage in the lip sync to stay in the competition. So those were just a few examples of when the storylines of certain queens can be manipulated to fit a certain narrative that the producers think will make for better TV. And although it's difficult to prove whether these claims of storyline manipulation are actually true or not, if they are, it would certainly be another reason why some people think that Drag Race is fake. Pre-planned winners and losers One of the more shocking rumours that has been said about Drag Race is that the winners are pre-chosen and also that the eliminations are pre-planned before the lip sync. Obviously none of this has been confirmed, but here are a few examples that people have used. On season 4, Jiggly Caliente became a fan favourite but was often criticised by the judges for not being as polished as some of the other queens. There is an internet rumour that says that Jiggly's elimination was pre-planned even before the lip sync. In episode 7, which was the Dragazines episode, Jiggly received negative critiques and landed in the bottom. During Untucked, Jiggly can be seen crying and it is made to look like the reason she is crying is because she's worried about going home. However, it has been rumoured that Jiggly was actually crying because she had received a checkout letter from the hotel on the day of the runway before the lip sync had even been filmed. This would imply as though the producers knew that Jiggly was going home and had told the hotel to check her out of her room. 
Apparently Jiggly even mentioned the letter in Untucked and can be seen holding what looks like a piece of paper, but the mention of the letter was edited out. And a few other queens have apparently made similar claims during the earlier seasons, but this hasn't happened in the later seasons. On the flip side of that, it has also been suggested that the winners of the show are also pre-chosen by production. As we all know, and I've talked about this several times in my videos, each of the finalists has to film themselves winning and then in the final edit they only use the footage of the queen that actually won. But some people have said that the winner is already chosen before the finale and that the finale is manipulated in order to favour a particular queen. And although there is no definite proof of this, the fact that a tie between Bianca Del Rio and Adore Delano was filmed at the season 6 finale must mean that Corny Act didn't really stand a chance of winning and this was planned by production. Similarly, Willem has said on her podcast Race Chaser that at the season 4 finale, when Jeremy was filming his winning speech, a piece of jewellery fell off his outfit and when he bent down to pick it up, the crown also fell off. And apparently Jeremy then asked if he could refilm his speech because of the mistake, but the producers told him that it didn't matter, so it was clear that Jeremy's footage was never going to be used anyway because he didn't win, which further feeds into the idea that the winners are pre-chosen. And Willem has also said in the past that Sharon was allowed to redo her entrance because her hat fell off the first time that she walked in but no one else was allowed to redo their entrance, so Willem claimed that production favoured Sharon. And some other contestants have also implied as though winners are pre-chosen. For example, in Season 3, Mariah Paris Balenciaga was eliminated in Episode 6 after the Snatch Game. But apparently, Mariah's mirror message was edited. The part that we saw said, Mug 4 Days. But then, in the closer shot, you can see that there is something else written which was blurred out during the wider shot. Apparently, this part said, Congratulations, Raja, implying that Mariah felt that Raja had already been chosen to win. And I don't know if this is true or not, but the fact that the producers decided to edit this mirror message out just creates more suspicion than if they had just left it as it was. So although we'll never know whether the winners or losers of Drag Race are pre-chosen, you can see why these rumours would lead people to think that Drag Race is fake. Production Secrets We all know that a lot goes into making a TV show like Drag Race, so it should come as no surprise that the production team have certain tricks and secrets that they use in order to make the show more entertaining. But this does mean that some moments are not as real as you might think. For example, in All Stars 4, Episode 6, the Eliminated Queens came back to the competition in a Lala Perusa lip sync smackdown where they had the opportunity to return to the competition and knock out one of the remaining queens. The way they chose the song was that the pit crew brought out briefcases and each briefcase had the name of a different song inside it so that way the queens wouldn't know which song they were lip syncing to. However, Naomi Smalls once confirmed that all the briefcases actually contain the same song, so the Queen is going to get the same song regardless of which briefcase they actually pick. All those suitcases are filled with the exact same thing. Like, oh god, I looked down and I saw them putting adrenaline in each suitcase. And this clearly shows that production wants to control which Queens get which songs. And this should probably come as no surprise because Trinity the Tuck lip synced against Jasmine Masters to the song Peanut Butter, which gave Trinity the opportunity to do her signature butt shake, and this seemed a bit coincidental. And also, Mo Hart and Latrice Royale were the final pair to lip sync, and their song was Sissy That Walk, which is arguably the most famous RuPaul song and works the best as a final and most dramatic lip sync song, so it would seem like this was done on purpose. And on a similar note, it has been rumoured that the wheel used at the finales to select which queens lip sync against each other is actually motorised, so production can control where it lands. And although I couldn't find any evidence of this, it does sound like it could be true. For example, in All Stars 7, there was this narrative throughout the season that Monet Exchange and Trinity the Tuck had this sort of rivalry but also camaraderie because they both won All Stars 4 and were the first twinners of the franchise. So it did seem very coincidental that in the final lip sync Lala Perusa Smackdown in Episode 7, that Monet and Trinity were paired in the lip sync because of the wheel. 
And speaking of Monet and Trinity's win in All Stars 4, there is a rumour that at the last minute, the producers decided on a double crowning for All Stars 4. If we look at the final edit of when they announced the winners, you'll notice that the camera cuts away from RuPaul when she says that it's a double win, and it sounds a bit like a voiceover that was added in. Race Hall of Fame is... For the first time in All Stars history, you are both winners, baby. And you also never see both Trinity and Monet on stage together with the crown and scepter, and it cuts to a split shot of them. But from the editing, I think it's clear that the double crowning was not originally planned for whatever reason, and they tried hard to cover this up, which is why a lot of people question how real and authentic Drag Race is. So there you go, there was a bit of a deep dive into whether or not Drag Race is fake and the reasons why some people think that the show is not as authentic as it would appear. Obviously it's up to you to make your own decision on this, but looking at all the evidence, it's clear that Drag Race is a highly produced show and you can't always believe everything you see. But as to whether Drag Race is fake or if it's simply manipulated for maximum entertainment value is open to interpretation. Ellie Diamond's Twitter Drama Ellie Diamond competed on the second season of Drag Race UK and placed fourth. Ellie recently received some criticism on Twitter, which appeared to be a misunderstanding after something that happened at a live show. Back in November of this year, a Twitter user named Amir tweeted saying, Not a Rue girl walking by the venue at Lady Bushra OG was performing at and doing a thumbs down from outside the window towards her on stage. How very supportive. The fact Bushra said on stage that she'll go online and be all hashtag ally, we screamed. Just to explain, Lady Bushra is a character developed by British comedian Amir. And it appears as though the Twitter user who posted the original tweet might be Amir's husband because they have the same name according to this article in the Manchester Evening News. However, this isn't 100% confirmed. Anyway, although the Twitter user didn't name the Rue girl that they were talking about specifically, Ellie Diamond then responded to the tweet, seemingly admitting it was her. Ellie said, I would like to comment to defend myself and just say I was walking past and heard someone on the mic say drag race and I ran up to the window and booed and put thumbs down towards drag race jokingly. Anyone that knows me knows I joke about drag race like that. The Twitter user then replied to Ellie in several tweets and basically said that what Ellie did was quote appalling and said that it was an unfortunate timing because it happened during a quote momentous occasion for the South Asian community. The Twitter user then went on to advise Ellie to not do that again because it can quote literally break an artist. Ellie replied and said, I walked away saying how stunning you look to my fiance. I'm sorry that this was a misunderstanding and I have messaged Bushra privately. I support and celebrate all drag as all should. Trust me, I'm not that gal. And Ellie also said that she was quote deeply saddened that her joke was misunderstood and that she didn't realize Lady Bushra was on stage. The Twitter user then replied back and said, Thank you for this, Ellie. We're much stronger as a community together, uplifting and supporting, and you're always welcome at a Bushra cabaret. Drag Race UK Season 4 Behind the Scenes Tea So, some of you may know this already, but after every Drag Race UK elimination, the queens do exit interviews with several media outlets, such as Attitude, hosted by Tia Coffee, and Pop Buzz, hosted by Why She Black. And the UK season 4 queen spilled some interesting behind the scenes tea and fun facts, so I thought I'd group all of them together for you here. The first one is about Just May, who was eliminated in episode 1. In her exit interview with Attitude, Just May revealed why she walked into the workroom with her hand in a weird position. Just May said that right before she was about to enter the workroom, someone got some pen ink on her outfit, so she had to try and wash it off. And because her outfit was still damp when she entered the workroom, she had to cover it up by holding her hand in that position. The next fact is about Copper Top, who was eliminated in episode 3. You may remember that earlier in that episode, for the mini challenge, the queens had to vote in the NAFTA awards and nominate their fellow competitors in categories such as Best Hot Mess and Best Scene Stealing Attention Grabbing Camera Hog, amongst others. 
Coppertop won the category of Best Background Actress in a Non-Speaking Role, implying that she was most likely to fade into the background. Copper seemed quite annoyed by this, and in her exit interview with Attitude, Copper revealed that she actually refused to vote for that category in the NAFTA Awards. Copper said that the competition is already a, quote, hot box of emotion, and mental health is important. If someone gets this award, it's going to send them to a dark, dark place. Copper then said that refusing to vote for this award backfired because she ended up getting that award and was then eliminated later in that episode. Copper also said that she shouldn't have been in the bottom for that week's challenge, which was the duo design challenge, because Copper apparently sewed all of Cheddar's outfit, as well as her own, and said that they should have been judged in pairs. It has also been implied by some people online that Copper was deliberately put in the bottom against Black Pepper that episode because the producers wanted to get rid of Copper because she was quiet, which is why they decided to break the pairs and judge the queens individually. The next fact is about Sminty Drop, who was eliminated in episode 4. You may remember that Sminty was in the bottom that episode with Baby after their poor performance in the improv challenge. And then later in Untucked, Dakota Schiffer said that Sminty was the worst in the challenge. This look is impeccable, but I think you... It sounds... To phrase you think I'm lip syncing? I, I think you were the. Yeah. I think you were the worst yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, Sminty revealed in her exit interview with Pop Buzz that because she was annoyed at Dakota for saying that she was the worst, when Sminty was packing up her things to go home, she stole Dakota's spirit gum so Dakota couldn't glue down her wigs. For those of you who don't know, spirit gum is an adhesive that is used to glue down wigs and fake beards. And during Dakota's exit interview with Pop Buzz, Dakota reacted to this news and said that other people's spirit gum had also gone missing, so by the end they were all having to borrow Cheddar Gorgeous's spirit gum because she was the only one with some left. And speaking of Dakota Schiffer, that is who the next fact is about. Dakota Schiffer was eliminated in episode 7, which was the makeover challenge. You may remember that when Dakota went back into the workroom, she ran over and picked up a sweater that had her name on it and put it on. She didn't explain it in the episode, so it seemed a bit random why she put it on. But in the interview with Attitude, Dakota revealed that her twin had actually knitted that sweater, and Dakota had planned to wear it as one of the runways. And Dakota said that her twin had spent 12 days knitting that sweater, and had been distracted from writing their college dissertation because of it. And Dakota added that half the reason why she was crying during her elimination was because she was sad that she didn't get the opportunity to wear that sweater that her twin had made for her on the runway, which is why she decided to wear it during her elimination. Willem calls out a horror and taste. Willem competed on season 4 of Drag Race US and also co-hosts the podcast Race Chaser with season 5 and All Stars 2 contestant Alaska. You may remember this, but back when Drag Race UK Season 3 was airing, Willem said on a podcast that she had been informed that Season 3 of Drag Race UK was filmed in just 10 days. But this was debunked by Season 3 contestant River Medway, and Willem responded. However, Willem then clarified in a later episode that what she meant was that some of the episodes were filmed in one day, but not all of them, but the point was the production was more rushed than usual. At the time, Willem didn't confirm where she had heard this information, so some people thought that Willem had made it up. However, in a recent episode of the podcast, Willem confirmed that she had received this information from Drag Race UK Season 2 contestants Ahura and Tace. Except if Ahura tells me, and then sometimes it's a little fictitious. It's when she tells you it's filmed in 10 days, it's not true. <laughs> And taste too. Hey girl, she told me that. She, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and on a similar note, on a different episode of the podcast, Willem said that she had been told that during the taping of season three, RuPaul had told the contestant, Charity Case, that she needed to be more glam and shave her legs. And apparently Charity said while walking off stage that her drag was good enough for Vogue and she didn't need this. And then later on the main stage, RuPaul apparently called Charity Ford and confronted her about what she had said, but they didn't air any of it in the episode. 
RuPaul told Charity that she wanted to see more glam drag. She wanted to stop seeing her hairy ass. And Charity Case was heard on the mic walking back to Untucked or the, the back room saying uh, if it was good enough for Vogue. And then RuPaul, when the girls came back out on stage, said to Charity before she sent anybody home, Charity, come forward. And she said, you don't, uh, so you think you're better than my show? You don't need this? Say it to my face. And they didn't air any of it, obviously. And Willem also implied as though this might be the reason why Charity was eliminated in the next episode. Charity was kept for one more episode. That's what I was told in April when I was told this tea, which was also when I was told that they filmed it in 10 days. However, this tea hasn't been confirmed by anyone else as of yet. Baby is no longer a drag queen. Baby competed on season four of Drag Race UK and left the competition in episode five, saying that they needed to leave to focus on their mental health. Baby later released a statement saying that they had been having, quote, aggressive and frequent panic attacks, but then when walking into the workroom, pretending as though nothing had happened. Baby also did not come back with the rest of the cast for the roast in episode nine or the finale in episode 10. The day after the finale aired, someone tweeted asking why Baby was not at the finale, and Baby replied saying, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. And then shortly after this, in a separate tweet, Baby said, don't refer to me as a drag queen anymore. There was then a string of reply tweets where Baby confirmed that they use they them pronouns, but they aren't precious about it. When asked if they had quit drag, Baby said that they would still be performing and said that wearing makeup and a wig doesn't mean that you're doing drag. Baby also said that they have no resentment towards the word drag, but they are a non-binary performer slash creative and therefore think the term drag is not applicable to them. Did Pixie Polite make Jomba's Blonde cry? Pixie Polite competed on Drag Race UK Season 4 and placed 5th. Jomba's Blonde also competed on season four and placed third slash fourth. Shortly after the finale of season four aired, a user posted on Reddit saying that during the crowning event for season four, there was a Q&A event and Pixie started whispering mean comments about Jomba's and eventually made Jomba's cry. The rumour then quickly circulated online and Pixie denied the allegations on Twitter, as did several other of her season four queens. I asked Pixie about this rumour in my interview with her, and Pixie said that the rumour was completely false and showed text messages from Jombas to prove it. It should also be noted that the Reddit thread has since been closed by moderators and the Reddit user deleted their account. Crystal Versace accused of stealing makeup ideas. Crystal Versace competed on season 3 of Drag Race UK and was the winner. During the episode 10 finale of season 4, all the previous UK winners came back for a guest appearance, namely the Vivian, Lawrence Cheney and Crystal Versace. Shortly after the episode aired, Crystal was accused by an artist called Hungry of copying their makeup and not crediting them. Hungry is a Berlin-based artist who is known for doing what they describe as distorted drag. Hungry tweeted a side-by-side -side photo with Crystal saying, when you spill a little ink when you buy it at Versace. Later the same day, Hungry tweeted saying, she barely got two lines in, but then again, it's probably hard to open one's mouth with someone else's face stretched across your own, shrug emoji, send tweet, Siri send tweet, tweet it, send, send. And this started a big debate in the comment section. Some people agreed with Hungry and said that Crystal had clearly copied Hungry. And other people disagreed and said that Hungry could not claim that Crystal had copied them. And in a tweet which has seemingly been deleted, Crystal responded to Hungry saying, if only you could walk properly, and tagged Hungry. And the video seemed to show Hungry walking a runway. Hungry then posted a thread with several tweets where they basically said that crediting artists is important and does not diminish your own work if you were inspired by someone else. They also said that you should not exploit your own community and they have been fighting for recognition for their whole career. And they ended by saying that crediting an artist helps their work endure and not get forgotten. And if you'd like early access to my videos and to be able to DM me one on one, sign up to my Patreon and unlock all the member benefits today. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and please make sure you subscribe to my channel to show your support. And I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you. Bye.